let's see, 65 people are on. All right. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to the Partnering to End Childhood Hunger Summit. I want to first ask, oh, <laughs> that was my first ask, so if you can mute your lines, that would be really helpful. Um, and of course, oh, I do hear one. I'll wait till that stops. Lisa, you're muted. <laughs> you muted everyone. Thank you, Jamie. <laughs> I think that's the like the most used term I've heard in the last six months is you're muted. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I saw everyone was muted, but I I yeah. didn't look at myself. <laughs> that's a feature we're using today, and um, it's probably my favorite button on Zoom. <laughs> Thanks, Thomas. I can mute everyone. Perfect. Awesome. And I'd love to see all, all of your faces for at least the first part of this summit. And seeing your faces will help give energy to us as the speakers for at least the opening remarks. So please do so if you can. Um, we will and we want you to actually focus on the person speaking. So if you can click speaker view in the top right of your screen, you'll probably have a better experience. Now, I, I think you probably noticed the message that came up and said that we are recording the summit today. And we will add the recorded sessions to our website at mountpec.org for those that are not able to attend, or if you just want a refresher on some of the information shared. So thank you for being here today and for making this a priority. This summit is hosted by the Montana Partnership to End Childhood Hunger. Being here shows your support your willingness to collaborate, and your desire to do more. We're all coming in from different parts of the state, from different work, different agencies, and different experiences. Each of us has a valuable role and a unique perspective. I'm Lisa Lee. I'm the director of Montana No Kid Hungry and co-chair of the Montana Partnership to End Childhood Hunger. The one acronym I will use today is for Mount Peck, which of course stands for Montana Partnership to End Childhood Hunger. And it's only because it's just such a long name. Um, and before we get started, I wanna pause here and I will ask Kim Paul, Executive Director of Pecani Lodge Health Institute and Blackfeet Nation to give a prayer. Kim. Thank you all. Um, I know that we all have different belief systems and. You know, isn't that the beauty of life that, that we have so much diversity? I mean, some things are mandatory, um, like breathing and cellular functions, but um, our spiritual beliefs uh, uh, add to the diversity and beauty of this world. And so I just ask that you just take a moment, um, whether you have the same belief system as, as this prayer or, or any other, but just to take a moment and, and be grateful for um, every breath and all that we uh, experience and the ability to do um, this wonderful and fulfilling work that we all join in. Um, I'm going to pray in Pikani uh, initially and um, just thank you guys for this time. Ionina, Ayo Estabatabio, Ayo Nok Spumoke, Spumoke, all the people on this call, on the Zoom video, and all the work that they're doing. Ayo Napinatu, Kipitaki, Kukumuki, Samakusu, Atsa, Samani Gapu. Thank you so much for this day. Thank you for the many blessings that we receive. <clears throat> Thank you for this uh, growing relationship that we're building with each other and the work that we're doing out in the community and, and there globally. We're just so grateful for um, the strength that you give us. We ask that you would guide our hearts, our minds, our steps, our words and our actions each day in this work um, and in our relationships with uh, those that we interact with. We just thank you again for every breath. Um, we ask that you bless each person on this call, on this Zoom, and each one of their families. Put a hedge of protection around them. Um, help us to do good work. Uh, and um, in Jesus' name I pray. Uh, amen. Thank you, Kim. 
that was a beautiful prayer and a perfect way to ground us and feed our spirit for today. Now the day will pass by quickly with the speakers we have lined up. So be ready to take notes and be inspired. Um, prior to March and with all of the food security efforts, we managed to bring the child food insecurity rate in Montana down to 15.9%, which is significant after seeing it at 22.9% in 2012. What does childhood hunger look like now during the pandemic? We're back up to 25%, one quarter of our kids in Montana. Unfortunately, due to the strains on the economy and health risks of COVID, it, had led, it has led to a spike in poverty across Montana. With more families living paycheck to paycheck, more families are struggling to put food on the table. Now, I live in Helena and I saw the desperation firsthand. I will never forget receiving an email from a woman in my community saying that she can't access no Kid Hungry, the No Kid Hungry program and her child needs food support in childcare because nothing was provided at an unlicensed daycare home. I of course clarified our role with No Kid Hungry and that we do not provide direct food access, but that I would try and connect her to food programs locally. She was a single mom working 60 hours a week and couldn't make ends meet. She had a financial crisis she didn't qualify for SNAP and she received some support from our local food bank but didn't know where to go and felt humiliated as she tried to ask for help. But she was desperate. After a series of emails and texts back and forth, I discovered that she was one that fell through the cracks due to the unusual circumstances with COVID. And with all of my connections, I still couldn't help her with the food programs available. And the food bank wasn't enough. So for a short period of time, I personally dropped off groceries at her doorstep. A couple of weeks later, I'm sorry, this wasn't supposed to happen. Sodexo Food Services under the Helena School District started providing multiple days worth of food through the summer meal program. So she could go and pick it up. That's actually all she needed. We still keep in touch from time to time because we've now formed a very close bond. Although other emergencies have taken place in her life since, she has enough food support, thanks to our summer food program to run through the Helena School District. Now I wanted to share this story because we all see the programs from a statewide, a regional, and a community level lens, but there are always gaps, even at the best of times. And a gap in our work means someone is going without food. And that's devastating to think about. With almost nine months behind us since the start of this pandemic, the food security challenges have been mag magnified. But there's so much hope from local communities stepping up and forming collaborations to better address the food security needs. We have seen a spark of innovation across the state and we're happy to showcase two local success stories here today, one in Browning and one in Warden, Montana. For those of you who are new here today, Mount Peck is a coalition that coordinates statewide efforts through ending childhood hunger in Montana. We're a dedicated, diverse group with membership representation from community advocates, public and private food programs, Montana's tribal nations, people with lived experience of hunger and poverty, agriculture, faith groups, health and business, and business sectors, and education. I would like to show this list of our members to recognize our full team. You might only see me and a handful of Mount Peck members here presenting, but know that there's 20 members in total on our coalition that have made this happen for you today. And it's truly a privilege for me to work with such a diverse, experienced and resourceful team. When times got tough during COVID, this coalition pulled together and headed into strategic planning because we wanted to do more as the food security needs became greater. Here's a slide with our revamped vision and mission. You will see our guiding principles here too because they speak to the foundation of who we are and how we do this work. About this time last year, we started a process to interview almost 60 different stakeholders to help influence our goals which in turn provided the direction we needed 
to help us be more effective as a coalition and get things done. From this, we have identified five goal areas in our strategic plan and have aligned our work groups around these goals. Jenny, you can click to that side when you're ready. Mount Peck's role is a convener, connector, thought leader, and promoter of equitable access to healthy food for all of Montana's children and families. We work to empower individuals, communities, and organizations to effectively address the root causes of hunger and poverty. And now, it's my privilege to introduce Cheryl Kennedy, the Regional D Administrator for the USDA Food and Nutrition Service at the Mountain Plains Regional Office. In this role, Cheryl oversees 15 hunger prevention and nutrition programs across a 10 state region. Prior to that, Cheryl served as a SNAP Regional Division Director. And at the start of her career with FNS, Cheryl worked with the Regional Food Distribution Program and with WIC. Cheryl, thank you for joining us today. You have such a wealth of knowledge and experience. We greatly appreciate all of your ongoing support towards feeding kids in Montana. Thank you, Lisa, for the, those kind words. Um, and uh, your story is making me cry too, so I'm gonna have to try and get through this. Um, the passion um, is just, I just feel really honored to be uh, part of this gathering of committed people sharing the innovative ideas, and especially during these unique times, and the passion that um, each of us bring, bring to this work. And, and your story was just a great example of that. Um, as, as Lisa had mentioned, um, FNS, focuses on ensuring that the nutrition programs are delivered through a human-centered approach and that, that to, to meet families where they are. So providing access to adequate nutrition, pathways to sustainable independence and positive health outcomes. And we do this through some of, uh, through the 15 nutrition assistance programs, some of those anchor programs being SNAP, the National School Lunch Program, WIC, now the Summer Food Service Program, because with all the, the COVID waivers and stuff that we've been through, that's been a great um, flexibility we've been able to do. The food distribution program on Indian reservations, the emergency feed, food assistance, pro, feeding assistance program, and the commodity supplemental food assistance program, um, just to name a few of the others. Um, and as, as you all know, nutrition assistance programs provide access to food and to promote good nutrition. And our programs should always help American families take one step forward each day to be better off than the day before, even during a pandemic. And when 2020 was a new year, few of us had even heard of COVID-19, and we certainly, certainly could not have foreseen how it would change our world. 2020 has definitely thrown us a number of challenges, and the tasks have been huge and often have felt exhausting and sometimes almost impossible. However, the solutions to these challenges revealed your deep passion for our shared mission. Through all the struggles and complexity, you made sure people were fed. And Lisa, I think you just shared a, an, an extraordinary story that um, several of us have probably experienced something similar. Over the last nine months, I have been inspired again and again just to see how every person working with every aspect of our programs has stepped up to meet the challenges. We have faced the wave after wave of obstacles to our standard efficient routines for doing business and pivoted lightning fast to devise ingenious solutions to some of this stuff. You have met and surpassed every challenge to make sure people who need food are connected to the right resources. Sometimes, Lisa, as you described, it's taken a while, but we've been able to get that, been able to connect them in some way. The human touch you bring nurtures our clients with the confidence that they have the know-how to provide much more than meals for themselves in the future. And last March, everything changed so fast and we all rolled up our sleeves and adapted even faster. And with your creativity and urgency, you change processes to source, prepare, and package food, guide local sponsors, design phone interviews, invented new logistics for safe food and um, benefit delivery for pickup, all while following regulations and moving the moving parts from all of the waivers and flexibilities that were implemented through this COVID. All this in an effort to keep our families fed and our community safe. And I've been so inspired by your dedicated, tenacious commitment to get the food out to those who need it within the new parameters that COVID-19 has brought all of us. Inspired by the school meals that staff get to nutrition, get nutritious foods to their students. By all of you who invented new ways to deliver service to our clients and applicants. 
some who are navigating assistance programs for the very first time in their lives, by the food banks, agriculture leaders, and local coalitions who invented new food supply and delivery chains, by nonprofits, businesses, faith-based organizations who tackled unfamiliar disciplines to help wherever they were needed. It's been amazing to see, and everyone has consistently pulled together to get all, all the behind the work scene, behind the scenes work, work done so that we could feed our families. And I'd want to share a couple examples. Um, I had visited the Missoula Food Bank this summer and was astonished to see how they were retooled their process practically overnight. From March through September, the staff and volunteers packaged more than 100,000 meals, delivered more than 500 boxes of food, and hosted more than 29,000 household pantry visits. In Shoto School District Food Service Director and her small but mighty staff adapted their system to serve fresh meals in the classroom, observing distancing and cohorting tasks to limit the virus's spread. And these are just a couple examples that we were able to, to be a part of here about as we move through these extraordinary circumstances. And all of you have stepped up in similar ways and keep stepping up as we continue to work through the global crisis. So I wanna give ourselves a moment to take a deep breath and I want to give and a big hand um, and just a heartfelt thank you from all of us at FNS and all the people that you that that you have helped that you may or may not get get to see. But also, I want to say to please don't forget all the people that you serve as part of your day, but to take time to reflect on how pretty special you all are for being there doing what you do to help them all in what you may just consider dust in a day's work. At FNS, our commitment to customer service includes commitment to you as well. You are our colleagues, our partners, and our best hope for life-changing transformations by our program participants. As your USDA partners at FNS, we are here to collaborate. Please don't hesitate to reach out for our help in finding ideas, best practices, potential partners, or to float any question. Nothing is too hard for us to overcome together. I think that's been a great, we've been able to demonstrate that by all of the flexibilities and waivers, too many to list in a short time that you've been able to navigate and implement to make sure that families, families were fed in a very trying time. And together, I just say, I think we make an unbeatable team. I look forward to continuing to work together. And through that, I think we'll continue to keep accomplishing amazing things. Together, we can be here for the people who need us. So thank you, thank you so much for all that you do and hope that we look forward to having a great meeting. Thank you so much, Cheryl. And now on behalf of Mount Peck, we have felt so grateful to have the leadership of Montana's First Lady with all of our efforts to end childhood hunger and to stand up for kids to make sure they're able to thrive. Lisa, you have been committed, dedicated, and consistent with your priorities over the last eight years. You showed up at schools to see Breakfast After the Bell and even read to kids while you were there. You wanted to see programs firsthand and meet the amazing people doing the work. You spoke at events and you even created the, the First Lady School Nutrition Awards to recognize some of the heroes behind the work. You're a true passion in the fight towards ending childhood hunger and your passion has raised awareness across the entire state. We're so grateful to you for advocating to ensure that kids have their basic needs met, for seeing the kids behind the numbers and for being there for all of us in the trenches of the work. We have been so proud to have you as our leader and will be forever grateful. Over to you, Lisa Bullock. Thank you, and I'm going to apologize in advance. My video ends up kicking me out of Zoom meeting, so that's my technical glitch. But at the end, I am going to try to start the audio and, and wave and express gratitude to you all. Um, can you hear me okay, Lisa? Am I? Yes, we okay. can. Thank yep. you so much. And thank you for inviting me to join you all today. This is one of my favorite, um, definitely top three events throughout the year. Um, and it's it's a privilege to have this opportunity to uh, be part of this powerful group of like-minded individuals committed to ending childhood hunger. I'm humbled to be on this Zoom full of people who recognize that every day too many Montanans go hungry and we must continue to work to change that. Uh, we all recognize that it's unacceptable, as Lisa mentioned earlier, that one quarter of our kids in Montana are currently struggling with food insecurity. 
I've had the privilege of witnessing all of your hard work yield successes in fighting childhood hunger during my time as First Lady. And I recognize that this year has created so many challenges for our families across our state. And food insecurity remains a top issue for our struggling state. Uh, this is, as a lot of you've mentioned before, an unprecedented time um, has really exemplified the important role that you all play in food, nutrition, and health. Um, we have witnessed Montana's putting them, Montanans putting themselves at risk to provide for our communities. Um, though your stories are not always discussed or covered in the news, your work on the front lines of our communities is essential for the health of our children, uh, just like your story, Lisa, that you, that you shared earlier. Uh, school, nutrition staff, food banks, faith-based organizations, I've been making a list of, of all of you that have forced to quickly adapt back in March of this year to ensure that Montanans have access to nutritional food during this unprecedented pandemic. Um, I'm in awe of your creativity and adaptability and finding ways to efficiently provide for others. And though my time as First Lady is coming to a close, I would like to give my sincere gratitude for um, Montana Peck for continuing to bring voices uh, from all levels of the public and private sector to the table. You all continue to foster an environment of collaboration and innovation to feed our families. Um, it's just been a pleasure to join this annual meeting for the past six years and to hear about your great work happening in our communities and all across the state. I always let, leave feeling uplifted and hopeful. Um, and speaking of hope, my hope is that this year's summit will provide motivation for you to continue to do the important innovative work that you do to fight childhood hunger. Um, I'm gonna close with uh, sharing a story I grew up three blocks from my grandmother, whose name was Caroline, and I named my oldest daughter after her. And the few times that she did babysit all six of us kids, which was a feat in and of itself, um, if there was ever a story on the news that scared us, whether it was a fire or a flood or someone's life came into harm, my grandma would always say, look for the helpers and focus on the helpers. And hopefully in your life's path, you are one of the helpers. So I'm so grateful to be surrounded by you helpers. <laughs> Food security will always be an area that I'm passionate about. Um, beyond my role as Montana's first lady, I will continue to follow this work and the work that you do, do my part, and stand in gratitude with you every step of the way. Thank you.